round five of the UK and I Skip Barber Racing School Series kicks off tonight at Homestead Miami Speedway. Join us in just a few moments and be ready for all the action for 17 laps of fast, furious, brutal racing. Welcome to Racebook Prime Time here on iRacing Live. Rich Wife and Nias Brostrom bringing you all the action from Monday Night Skippies. Live here at Homestead Miami Speedway in Florida. Or some roval racing. Is it a road course? Is it an oval? We don't know. It's a roval. One of those funky tracks, Linus, that, uh, well, no one could make their mind up, so they built a road course inside an oval. And uh, it certainly provides some very unique racing. Yeah, the first half, well, the first two thirds of the lap is a uh, normal road course. Uh, you get the normal kind of racing you get in this series, but that the last bit of the lap you go on the oval, flat out through three and four, and uh, we're gonna see a lot of drafting here tonight and some really good racing, and expect to see some awesome battles all the way to the finish. We certainly are, of course. Round five for the championship, and it's Fahim Antonides leading in uh, first place. He's got 206 points ahead of Stuart Agok in second. Of course, Agok didn't finish last round after contact with Benny Simonson. Adcock has a lot to gain here, and Antonidas a lot to lose. Driver's currently out on track qualifying at the moment, and we'll be getting ready to go green in just a few minutes' time. At, oh, I believe the flag is out on qualifying. Let's go to your grid. Team Antonidas takes pole. Simonson on his outside, ready for round two. Adcock starts in third. Maltby in P4. Nathan Davies in P5. Adam Dodd in P number six. Brendan O'Brien is 7th, Clark Williams in P8, Mick Watson and Tim Adcock round out your top 10. Best of the results on your screen now as the drivers take the grid and get ready for 17 laps of racing around the 10 corner Homestead Road B course. We ran a course last season, this season a little different, it's kipping out that inside infield Mickey Mouse section towards the end of the lap, hopefully going to make this a little more exciting. So for the last drivers now to take to the grid and we'll get ready for a lot of action here. Will Simonson and Antonidas duke it out again? Will Adcock have his say this time? We'll find out in just a few seconds time as those drivers get ready for this race. It'll be a great one of course. Only seven rounds remaining so plenty still to play for. Antonidas lead could be temporary. Final moments now as the drivers take to that grid and make sure everyone's on the track. It's a good grid tonight. We're looking at 28 drivers who are running. Oh, 29, I apologise. Is this going to be an exciting one? Engine start to rev. Keep our eyes on the drivers at the front of your field. That was a false start. I think they were just revving because they wanted to trick us. But uh, they are getting ready now. Just a few more moments remaining on the play clock before we start this one. It's going to be an exciting, exciting round. And tonight, is, of course, has to defend this one. He has to push hard. Simonson proving himself a threat already. 
Let's see what can happen with Adcock if he can stay in this one this time by. Nathan Davies, they're looking for a good run after a promising run last time out. Let's see what he can do. Will it be another podium for Ryan Walker? We'll have to find out. Of course, he's starting back in 11th. The engines do rev finally. Lights are on the Iverson Gantry, and the lights are out. We're away here at Homestead Miami Speedway in Florida. Amazon pulls to the early inside there in front of Adcock. Have to see what develops from this one. It's a good start, though. By Antonidas, he did what he needed to do here. Have the racing line into the first corner. Good gap over Simonson. The two wide racing back inside the bottom end of your top ten as we flow through this first couple of corners here. Turn number two there, a real choke point for these drivers. Turn three also. Too wide through the field, but everyone survives so far. Good, clean racing back in the pack from the guys here as they get through this section of corners. Down the infield lake, of course. Oh, that lake, man-made. That's where all the uh, tanking came from. We had to get it from somewhere. As Antonidas at the front makes a good gap already. Up to about a uh, tenth of a second, uh, four tenths of a second at the moment. Amundsen being hunted by Stuart Adcock Cleaners. Yeah, he made a really good start, and he's uh, starting to break away already but when we get onto the oval the draft is going to be massive so I think all the cars behind him are going to catch right back up to him. They probably will. We'll see that now of course. The oval here and like last time round on road course A we don't go into the infield section again. We run all the way round to turn three and four NASCAR banking and everyone stays in the bottom because it's the place to defend here. You want to make sure you give them no room to pass and if they have to go the long way around the outside. Looking like the draft not being too big too soon. But Simonson is starting to close in here as we come through turn number four here of the NASCAR course. He'll be gaining. Will he try to go around the outside into the fast flowing turn one? And tonight just goes wide to make a good defensive line for the entry. He will try and protect this one. He does. Not close enough this time by for Simonson, so Venus that might need to be a little closer before they exit onto the oval part. Yeah, he had about half a second going onto the oval. That proved to be enough this time, but then again, look like Simonson lifted out just a little bit towards the end to not be side by side. Uh, we have a contact in turn one, there's one car off, two cars off, one flip in. We'll have to find out who that was, and uh, we believe one of those drivers Martin was... Martin Fox and yeah. someone else. It was Martin Fox there, we're going to get a replay for you now. Martin Fox there heading into the corner with the, uh, oh, the car of Alan Paxson there, the 18 machine. Uh, yeah, contact between Patterson and Fox there. Both of them go off in contact as well with the number 30 car there. That was the driver, Jonathan Rex. He gets through it though with minor damage. Biggest problems are for, of course, driver Martin Fox there. Patterson able to continue, but we'll go back to the front of the race now. Back to your live coverage here, and it's a lot closer this time by for Benny Simonson. Right up behind for him and Raft already playing a big factor. We'll get to see here, Linus, whether he can really go around the outside and do a defensive no he goes straight to the inside for him lets him through almost no defense early on he wants to stay in draft range he knows how big this is he's going to use it later in the race to make a pass he's going to come right back now when we go into turn one he's going to make the move and come right back on him but here we go we almost make contact there's three wide cross the start finish line going to one and two needs backs out and we got four places Davies. diving to the inside wow what a move wow Davies. that was bigger than we expected uh, the NASCAR style run across the start finish line there as Nathan Davies brings it up to second place. He takes a look at the inside here of Benny Simonson. He will, in fact, put it in there. Nathan Davies to the lead. Contact from Maltby on the back of Fiam Antonida there as they check up to the corner. But on the undercut here comes Benny Simonson once again. But no, the lead will go back to, to Nathan Davies. A huge run by the Welshman. Stuart Adcock will put his nose in as well and try and make a move. Tonight is looking for a safe finish here rather than a victory. He has a comfortable points lead, Linus. Oh, we'll go crash behind. Uh, P number eight. Oh, I think that's Clark Williams. We'll find and out Brendan what happened. Ran uh, into the Brendan back Clark O'Brien. Brendan O'Brien. Yeah, not a big one there. They're both still driving. As uh, they have some breaking contact between those two. Nothing major, thankfully. We can continue with the coverage for that one. But uh, Davies drops back as uh, no, he holds inside line through the final corner onto the oval part. Do a check up again there as a breakaway for Benny Simonson to be neutralized again, Linus. But Davy is really showing some pressure early on. Yeah, he saw the opportunity and just went for it. And going into turn two, he had another chance to make another position up and took the lead. Well, he's going backwards again now, uh, and he's not going to have too much help from the draft either with all these cars right behind him. Uh, but what we saw from Fahim there on that last lap, he was going to let him go down to second going into the turn and then down the straight he wanted to get back in the lead 
he didn't count on the guys behind him making moves, so that's what cost him a good decision to back out. As there are three wide into one again. They are indeed three wide into one this time, rather across the start finish line. This is very dense racing at the front. The draft here, a major, major factor. As Benny Simonson still leads again this time by Davy Seven, a comfortable looking second place. And that's uh, Simon Maltby through as well to third. This could be a really topsy turvy finish for looking at Linus, but looking back further in your field, as Adam Dodd racing side by side there with Fahim Antonides. Like he will have the inside line into the corner ahead of him. Mark Williams behind, keeping his eyes on the prize. Mick Watson in the treble six car, Red Devolution Racing following up the rear and behind them Ryan Walker as well into the top ten, looking like a good run from him. Bill Fraser one half of Fraser squared, running in P11, where's the other one? He's down in P14, Venus. Yeah, once again we've seen Fraser Williamson make a really good uh, start to the race. He qualified 18th and he's up to 14th already. Uh, I think we'll see him climbing into the top ten like he usually does. Have to see what happens of course, but uh, It'll be exciting to see what these guys can do later in the race. Looking at the leaders once again as we head through turn number three and four of the NASCAR course. It's still Simonson from Davies. Adcock has dropped back to fourth. It is uh, Simon Maltby in third. It's a big run by Nathan Davies. He'll get the outside line around Benny Simonson here for turn one. This could be a big overspeed for him. Turn one, big fast flowing shoot lean as he can really focus that speed down and outbreak the guy into turn number two. Yeah, if you, the guy you trust his car the most is the one who's going to have the lead when you're side by side going into one. But then again, you have to be able to stop the car as well. He's got lap traffic on the grass, I think, causing some problems. They do. But they Alan Patterson, out. he uh, was involved, as you saw, in that incident with Martin Fox. Alan Patterson has gone a lap down now. Uh, he, in fact, he's pulled his car off the pits there. He's uh, given up in this one, I believe. But Simonson, once again, leading up towards the uh, corner here around the boating lake in the middle of home Miami Speedway. Simonson has a comfortable lead at this stage. It doesn't look as though Davies has much for him, but surprised Linus to see Adcock and Antonidas drop so far back into P4, P6 respectively. Well, Fahim backed out there at the end of lap one, start of lap two, and uh, had a lot of cars passing him at once, and he hasn't been able to recover since. And since we have that little gap between fourth and fifth, he's really going to struggle to get back up to the top four unless. They start working together and they start battling at the front. Uh, but it's a long way to go and as long as they battle for the top four, Fahim is going to catch right back up. And I don't think uh, the Adcock is in too much of a hurry either. No, it's, it's, uh, this is this Fahim Antonidas of old that we know that's I'd rather go for a safe result than a, than a good result in some cases. And here he is, he's going around the outside there of Adam Dodd there as well with Clark Williams behind him. Getting a three wide across the start finish line there. Good run by Fernandez in the middle. We will break latest. We'll find out very soon. Dodd does back out. Got the last of our breakers. Fernandez makes up a spot. Oh, nearly contact so there. Close. Huge oh, moment there as Adam Dodd on a tight line there nearly makes a mistake and runs into the back of Antonides. Very nearly taking out your championship leader. Dodd runs wide and loses not one, not two, but three spots on the racetrack. Big mistake for Adam Dodd there under braking, but oh, that's Antonides making a good move up there to the middle. Must have been the good, best line out on Fleenus. He was in the middle, he had the opportunity to take the corner well, but wide enough line to really get the run. Yeah, he braked way too late there, and Fahim was just lucky to not have been hit by him, because that could have ended the race for both of them. Uh, but he did a good job getting the car stopped on time. He still went off, but could have been a lot worse. It certainly could, and that, we talked about Fahim in safe mode. That wasn't really safe mode that we expected, but. He's now behind Stuart Adcock. He should gain this time by on the oval section as himself, Maltby, Davies and Simonson are running for your top four. It's a good race at the front, in fact, at the moment. It's great racing. As Maltby takes a look at the inside of Davies there, but not able to get anything done about that. Simonson still leading. He's led every lap but the first one, of course. We've been taking the early lead from Antonides. Good qualifying pace from Fahim, as we expect these days, Linus. But Simonson, on his entry into the series, has really started to step his game up and provide some serious challenge for Antonides. Yeah, he's developing well, and towards the end of this season, I think he's going to be battling for him all the time. As we've got a pass for the lead here, Davies takes it, but uh, Simonson takes it back on the breaking point. Uh, but yeah, for next season, I think Simonson will be a real championship competitor when he's this good from the from race one. Certainly will be. It'll be nice to see a lot of competition in the series, of course, as uh, he is chased by uh, Nathan Davies, who's trying to make some moves. Davies, of course, scored as leading that lap at the start-finish line. Sorry, Richard, we got a massive battle for the 
up to men of the top 10 here with five, six, seven cars going side by side through the first few corners. You certainly do, and that's just outside your top 10. Of course, Tim Adcock there and uh, Bill Fraser, that is uh, P11 and 12, 13, 14, 15, fighting in the pack here. Fraser, Turner, Van Verke, Williamson and Bidewell involved in that one as well. including Paul Thurston, so a great fight going on here. Amongst these guys trying to stay in the points, of course. 15, four points is the last scoring position here. They look like they're going to try three wide into the final corner. Williamson does not go for the three wide. He settles for a good launch out of the corner. Two wide, Van Verke, and uh, that is Mark Turner. We'll settle that one out, and it'll be a good run by Fraser Williamson and Adrian Bidewell behind them. See what they can do if all they stay in line together and draft around the outside. It looks like they might be. No, they're not. No, nope. the idea of drafting together seems completely alien to Skip Barber Drivers Linus. We're all going to try and pass each other. Yeah, they've been sitting side by side for well over a lap now, and this is costing them time as well. Uh, but these guys, not much oval racers in this group, uh, which you can tell because they're not really helping each other, but it's a battle amongst themselves and they're not too worried about people catching them. As they go two by two, and here they're going to go three, three wide, wide into turn one, and going to make it again. Someone's in the grass. Oh, Fraser on the grass. Berkey Bill Fraser. Makes the best move against another spot, but he's going to lose it back. Yeah, so we oh, expect Jonas Van Verke, Linus, up. and. Uh, Chris Williamson really to be working together here. They are oval drivers. You'd expect to see them drafting together, tandeming on the oval section, but it'd be too wide. No, nearly three wide it was coming off that corner. We'll settle back in line there as Van Verke makes the moves. Brings himself up ahead of Tim Adcock and Bill Fraser. He'll have that position move himself to 11th on the racetrack. Very interesting move by him there, but a good one, Linus. Very aggressive at the stage. Lap eight, of course. We're about halfway through. Yeah, it's a really, really good move. Um, like you say, there's two oval races out of these five, and that's not enough to make make uh, make your skills work together with someone else, because all the others will just keep running side by side, and you can't pull away from them. So just do what everyone else does, and hope that you can be at the front at the end. We'll have to keep an eye on this group here as they run through the oval section once again. And that scatter effect is every, of course, oval drivers, Linus. You know, they know more to back off on the oval oval tracks and. And, and, and draft off each other, perhaps for later. Road yeah. drivers, though, they seem to really want to pass as soon as they can, as their Bill Fraser going round the outside of Jonas Van Verke. And it is. Up. Yeah, three wide for the lead. Looking at them now, actually, we'll focus on these guys, as that pack was being very well behaved there. As through to the lead goes Simon Maltby. Up the inside goes Ooh, Benny Sanderson. Contact! Contact, contact again, but he's somehow straightened out. An aggressive move again by Benny Simon. So this is the second time he's done something like that, Venus. And well, oh, Simon Maltby uh, nearly turned around there by Simonson. An aggressive contact. There could be suspension damage on either of those cars, but well, Simonson has the inside line here. There could be some words exchanged. Yeah, Maltby could have given him a little bit more room, though, but Simonson made a proper dive into that corner, and it's too early to do things like that when you're at the front of the pack. But obviously, he doesn't want to be in second, and he's showing that he's going to go for the win. Uh, from what I can well, see, the irony, Linus, is that second would be better for him at this stage. Of course, second means uh, you have the draft effect into the final corner. You aren't the yeah. victim, as we see so often on these draft tracks, where being in the lead can actually cost you the race. And Bill Fraser just left the race as well. I don't know what's happened to him. We'll find out what happened to Bill Fraser, of course, half of the Fraser squared team himself and Fraser Wilson. Oh, contact into turn number two. Himself, Tim Adcock, and Jonas Van Verke going three wide there. Contact between Van Verke. Oh, big contact with a lapped car. That was the car, I believe, of Ryan Walker. We'll have to he find out what happened to him lap. first, he though. Just he did. Oh, can't. we'll have to rewind this one and find out exactly what happened. But Watson and Walker contact into turn two. That spins Ryan Walker around. Ryan Walker's backwards on the racetrack. No. He rejoins the racetrack. And as he rejoins, rear ended by Bill Fraser. What a catastrophe, Linus. Yeah, that's a real shame. And one incident leading up to a few more, and well, all of a sudden. Oh, your lead! Lead! Looking at the lead at the moment, we've had some big moments there. As Simon Maltby is out at the moment. He's had major contact, we believe, with uh, the driver there of. I'm trying to work out who that is. That's a lapped car. Oh no! The 30 machine of Jonathan Rex making contact with your race leader. He's on the outside. Contact there with Nathan uh, Simon Maltby. Off the track into the guardrail. That traffic being terrible, Linus. 
Yeah, that didn't really work out for him, but he should have left him more room as well. He knew he was there, so he should have held out a bit more. Same thing as with uh, Simons in there earlier, he could have held out a bit more and given room, but it's one of those things. Lap traffic shouldn't come into play with the leaders, but unfortunately sometimes it does. Catastrophic turn of events, and well, this leaves lead three being Benny Simonson, Antonides, and in fact, it is the driver of Adcock left remaining, of course. Nathan Davies, well, he's on pit road, as is uh, Adam Dodd scored in first. I'm not sure how that works, but Simon Maltby, Benny Simonson is uh, Maltby's out, sorry, juggling results in the moment with some timing issues. Simon Maltby is uh, scored, is returning to pit road, his car very damaged, as is Nathan Davies. Who is also out? Adcock, Simonson, and Antonides, your lead three. And uh, it's certainly shaping up to be quite a wild one. Leaders here on lap number 11. As we try and work out who is Ooh, in what position. Oh, we got position. contact again. Viverki is in the back of Mark Turner, and that's number six, seven, and then number eight goes in it as well to Adcock. We'll get you a replay of that one there as Van Viverki just misses his braking point, completely hits Mark Turner, spins him around. Middle of the racetrack, that leaves him in the way of Tim Adcock. Big contact there on the replay, you can see. Wow, this race is unfolding in complete chaotic fashion, Linus. Yeah, there's a lot of small incidents everywhere. People, and this has given us Fraser Williams, Williams, and up into P number eight uh, now, I think, from starting way down in the field. Well, you said he'd be in the top ten at some point. You weren't wrong, but we weren't should, we weren't expecting it to be this way. We've had so many incidents with lap traffic so far, and. Driver's missing the braking markers into that fast turn one, turn two braking zone leanness. But there, uh, that is Williamson fighting with driver of uh, Jonas van der Verke there. Van der Verke, no front wing, we believe. After that contact, he does not indeed. This could hurt his uh, front aerodynamics and mean that Williamson makes an easy move here. So he will use the draft effect on the car in front. That is, uh, we believe, Adrian Bidewell up ahead of him. We'll see those positions once they get across the start finish line. Looking at the lead though. It is Stuart Adcock up to the front, in front of Benny Simonson there. We might have a replay of Road Atlanta coming in Lena here, Linus, and what the beneficiary could be for him, Antonides. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens, but if he sits in third going on to the oval on the last lap and they're packed together like this, I think uh, Antonides three is going to pull it off. Could be a three-wide finish here at uh, Homestead, Miami, as these guys really have stayed completely together for the duration of this race. Clark Williamson running, Williams even running back in P4. Brendan O'Brien in P5. Adrian Bidewell P6. Chris Williamson P7 from P18. From P13, Jonas Van Verwerke is in P8. Tim Adcock up to P9. And Lee Diemer is in P10 from P22. Linus. 12 positions gained. Biggest mover in the race so far. Some uh, serious momentum here. Yeah, he's had a bit of help from all these crashes as well, but he's had a good race and uh, made some good moves. And right now, a car just behind him, Dean Bloomfield gets missed sideways by Holson on the track. Looking at the leaders now, good actually, we've him. got uh, they're onto the oval section of the track here, and it's Stuart Adcock, Simonson, and Antonides here. Expecting to see a move by Benny Simonson here on Adcock. Will he wait till the last moment? He does. He pulls out and he's going to draft around the outside. What will Antonides do? Antonides staying there behind Adcock. This is helping Adcock, Linus giving him that draft fit, but no, Adcock goes himself to the top because, you know, who cares about aerodynamics? And uh, we'll break that draft effect. That'll let Simonson go through to the lead of this race. If he can outbreak them both into turn number one and two, he does just that. Has the lead. Oh, a look by Stuart Adcock. He will not complete it. He backs out. Racing here hard at the front of this. Yeah, they're going to keep battling it out for P1 and 2 here, I think, and tonight is will wait until the last lap, though. He's he's smart enough and he knows enough about these cars to know exactly what he has to do, and he won't move up earlier than he needs to, because then he'll just lose, lose out again. Whoever's leading going on to the oval is not going to win this race, though. I think we can definitely say that one as we're here on lap number 13 with four to go. The Homestead Miami Speedway in the UK and I skip Barber Racing School Series. Benny Simonson from second place on the grid. He's out front at the moment from Stu Adcock. Team tonight as your pole sitter in third. Mark Williams up from P8 is in P number four at the moment. So we have a look to the inside, but no look for Stuart Adcock. He will back it out. Not going to have the best exit onto the oval here. So it'll be himself and Antonides. We're expecting Antonides might take this position, Linus. Yeah, well, I don't know if he's going to try and take it, but we'll see what he does. I think he's got it all figured out, so it's just going to be a matter of time. And what he wants to do, I think. 
It certainly does. Antonidas there looking at the back of Stuart Adcock. Will he make a move? But Adcock gets a huge run there and Simonson, the gap being wider. Seems to give him far more of a draft effect. And look at that from second place. He will cross the line first. Stuart Adcock has scored in the lead. He will clear Simonson here in turn number one and two. Should have the position secured for this lap. But that shows you, as being in second is really where you want to be on the final lap. Yeah, well, second or third, you uh, definitely don't want to be in the lead, that's for sure. But if you get a good run onto the oval, it could be enough to be in third, but at least you want to be in second, not in the lead, that's that's for sure. Absolutely. Being in the lead here would be a death knell for whoever's there. And well, Simonson seems desperate to take the lead, so he might actually shoot himself in the foot with that one as uh, he tries here to get way past Stuart Adcock for the lead of this race again. Looking for the back, Adrian Bidewell there. He is battling with Fraser Williamson. Williamson's gotten past him actually into turn number two this time. And Williamson there will be up into P6 in the racetrack as they will go through the roundabout corner here, the carousel around the lake as they head down towards the oval turn and rejoin Bidewell the oval track. actually locked up going into two and went in the grass and Fraser got sideways trying to avoid him so he almost took, took both of them out. Bit of a calamity corner that turn number two, Linus. It seems to be the source of a lot of accidents there. Stuart Adcock! Goes wide around Simonson after having been cut back for the lead of this one. Adcock up high on the oval banking. This will give him a good run off the corner, Linus, of course. Look at him pulling down now. Gaining speed there. I think he's worked something out. Yeah, these guys are going to be trying everything now to know what they want to do on the last lap. Actually, it doesn't look like Fahim has got anything against these two, or he's just lifting off. Uh, Simonson comes back on the inside. He's going to make the breaking point. He is. I think after last oh, week, uh, Linus, uh, I think after last week, Linus, uh, Antonidas is waiting for these two to lock horns and crash. Because it could be his ticket to a free win, of course, with the next car back. P4, Clark Williams being 3.6 seconds down the road here. A huge gap back to P5. That is seven seconds from your leaders. So we could see contact between Simons and Adcock here. That could give this to Fahim. Yeah, that could always happen. It's happened a few times before, but... I wouldn't count on that with the uh, with the last stretch being on an oval. I think they'll they're good enough to go straight without hitting each other. Yeah, right at the moment, when we're going to drive, we're going to have a look at actually a pair of them. It's uh, John Jenkins and Joshua Drinkwater here battling for P14, 15 of the racetrack. Two of the last points paying positions. The 43 there of Jenkins facing Drinkwater, who passed him last time by. Joshua Drinkwater in that beautiful pink 99 car is. Uh, Making some moves here. He's up from 27th on the grid, Leonard. Yeah, he's done a good race. Uh, and a drift there. Ooh. I've not seen him in this series before since I missed last week, but uh, it's good to see him doing well. And ahead of these two, we've actually got another four pairs of cars oh, are battling it out, so we're going to have a lot of last lap passes. Simons going around the outside of Adcock here. The reverse of what Adcock did to him last time by... We seem to keep showing the lead pass because, well, it's exciting when people draft and inevitably pass each other, but... Amazon to the inside here for lap 16. There'll be two laps to go here at Homestead Miami Speedway. Two laps to decide the winner of this motor race. At the moment, it's Benny Simons and Stuart Adcock. For human tonight, there's your podium. Clark Williams, Brendan O'Brien round up the top five. Adrian Bidewell, Fraser Williamson, Tim Adcock, Jonas van der Verke, and Lee Diemer, your top ten. Lee Diemer, he's fighting with uh, Dean Bloomfield there back for the last top ten position. Bloomfield looking for a run, but he hasn't got a chance at the moment. We will look back and look at the field. As it stands, so not many packs of cars anymore, Linus. We had that early on. Mostly pairs at the moment. You see Conor Maddock there racing with Paul Thurston in P number 11 or 12 and 13. Paul Thurston threw on Maddock this time by. And we'll have a look at the lead once again. And it's going to be tight until the second to last time round here. Who will decide where they want to be? I've got too wide there with Simonson running onto the oval. This is certainly a different situation to what we're used to. They're actually level this before is, they get on the banking. This is definitely what Fahim would like to see on the last lap. Them two being side by side because then he can draft off both of them and he'll easily pass them. Uh, let's see what he'll do this time. But no, he's, he just backs out when we get to the oval. He does want to be in third place. He does not want to get up there and get involved just yet. And he doesn't. And here comes uh, the driver, Stuart Adcock. He's going to stay in line at the moment. No, he is staying in line. He wants to be second. No, he's changed his mind because he wanted to. Apparently, as for him tonight, as goes even higher to get a good run down to the corner. It will be Simonson Adcock. Oh, nearly missed his breaking mark. It's Stuart Adcock there as he will pull through. Simonson in the first position. 
Hancock needs to be in second here onto the banking. This is his ticket to, to a win, Linus. A quick look back at the rest of your field as they run through the infield before we come to the deciding moments. Is P4 and 5 Williamson. is actually closing up as well, so we've got another they pair are. of cars to watch at the finish. Clark Williams and Brendan O'Brien will keep an eye on them. Adrian Bidwell, Fraser Williamson very close together there, further back. Behind them, Tim Adcock and Jonas van Verwerke, Lee Diemer and Dean Blumfeld. No one changing position yet. Just your leaders here. We have one more corner to go before they head on to the oval banking. And we see who will win. We think it's going to be Stuart Adcock. It could be for him and tonight, as Linus. It'll be too wide here. Why is Adcock passing at this stage? We don't know. He does he clear him. wants to outside to get a run, but he clears him, and that's not going to be good news for him. Adcock is not going to win this race. No, this might have cost him the race win here, Linus. As for him and tonight is behind Simonson, could be in the slingshot position here for the race win. Simonson could be in a great position, we don't know. Adcock here, we'll have to see what he does. He may go high into the corner. Simonson choosing a late move. And tonight is coming with him. Going to be three wide here onto the oval banking. One corner to go. Three wide for the lead. Simonson, Antonides, and Adcock drag to the line. The biggest and a big run. Oh, oh Simonson contact. contact! Simonson makes contact there. Simonson weaves into Fim Antonides and wrecks him before the line. Fim Antonides, has he finished? He has. Fim Antonides yeah. comes home in third position after last lap contact. We'll wait to see everyone else back before we review that one for you. That will be Bidewell, yes. Bidewell for P6. Williamson P7. And Adcock and Van der Verke drag race to the line. Adcock will hold the position. Ema, Bloomfield. Bloomfield will be... Deemer at the line. No, Deemer not. Return. Yes, he does. Bloomfield will make the position. First top 10 for Dean Bloomfield there. Drink beats Jenkins at the end for P14. Exciting, ladies. Uh, we're going to go back actually now and we're going to just post the race review. And passes oh. actually uh, Malt B for P17 right at the line as well. Got yes, a lot indeed. of last lap passes going on here. We're going to go back and look now and replay at the last lap moments between your three podium finishes. Benny Simons in your race winner, Stuart Adcock and Fahim Antonides. And we're going to look back at what is surely about to ignite fireworks. As coming through the final corner there, the NASCAR corner. Weaving there by Simonson, it seems, Linus. As he pushes Antonides out into the wall. Contact for Antonides, he will make it across the line just... And we believe Stuart Adcock backed out there to not be involved in that one. And Simonson will take the win. Yeah, Simonson shouldn't have moved up like he did. Uh, he should have stayed further down and Fahim would have had this, I think. But, uh, I don't know. It's racing and things like that happen when you're racing. Of course, we want to stay impartial here, but that's... Uh, of course, in a stock car, door banging like that is, is acceptable. But these cars have no doors or... Fenders, and it's almost inevitably going to cause a crash in an open wheel car. We need to stay impartial, of course, here at Racebot TV, but difficult looking at situations like that. And of course, we will be getting uh, Antonides on board here for you, see what's happening, and then we'll go to post race interviews. We do actually have the post finisher here to talk to us tonight. You might be a little upset. You'll see the onboard feed there as they're running through the final corner. Of course, it does look as though he. It's tough to say at this stage, Linus. Yeah, it's it's a tough call, you know. Uh, Simonson could have moved down a bit, Fahim could have been a little bit higher up, but it's contact, they're coming to the line. Uh, they have to be as close as they want to each other, and if Simonson oh. moves down, he's going to get past easily, so he does what he has to, and unfortunately, they get too close to each other. They do indeed. We're going to go to your post-race results now and show you who finished where. We're home with a win today. Benny Simonson in controversial situations. Bancart takes second, and for Human Tanides comes home in the third position and final step of your podium. Brendan O'Brien comes home fourth. Clark Williams in fifth. Bidewell in P number six. Williamson P7. Adcock in P8. Van Verke ninth. And Dean Bloomfield steals it at the line for the final spot in your top ten. The rest of those positions up on your screen now. Well, we're going to get your first post race interview. We're going to talk to the guy who came home in third position tonight, him and Tinnitus. Um, I'm going to have to do a uh, Channel 4 here and tell you you're live, please do not swear. Uh, tell us what happened. Hi Rachel, how are you? Well, um, I just tried to stay out of uh, trouble because um, this it's a disadvantage to have pole on a track like this because as you can see anyone who's uh, sitting behind pole man can outdraft them into the straight. Now, um, during the race, 
I was tiptoeing through T1 and 2 because I, there's been a lot of rear ending there going on. So that kind of dropped me a few places, but I managed to crawl back up to third and I was quite happy to stay there. Um, and insofar as the, the finish line, well, I think I had the momentum to cross that line first. Um, and I, there just wasn't enough room for me to fit through between that wall and, um, and, and that car. So I'm very happy that it finished third in the end because, um, I'm still leading the championship. So, um, good result in the end. Uh, we saw you playing uh, safe mode for most of that race, trying to stay in a good position without really battling for something that would cost you a lot of positions. So, third place still gives you a good lead over Stuart Adcock, and well, wow, number six should be an exciting one. Thanks for joining us, Fahim. Thanks very much. See you next week. See you next week. Well, we're going to get a chance to chat to the driver who came home in P number seven today, Fraser Williamson, up from P18 on the grid. Fraser, definitely a lot of drafting going on today. Yeah, drafting's the name of a game at Novo, I guess. It's just mayhem and madness and happen. Good race between yourself and Adrian Bidewell there towards the end. Uh, drafting to the line, not really had the edge on him, didn't quite make it. Well, if I've said this five times already, but if that lapped car wasn't there, and yeah, I think I would have had him quite easily. But he had the draft in the back stretch, which meant he could maintain his lead over me. The uh, lap tra traffic quite a problem today, Fraser. Uh, we saw a few uh, leaders fall foul of that. Um, in a serious money to look at? Probably not. They just need to understand the way that the car works. They were just a couple of seconds off the pace, which is fine. Not everybody's right up to Fahim's pace right off the start. But you've got to understand how far back the draft works, what time of the race it is, and if you're in a drafting zone in the last bit of the race, and it's the last drafting zone of the race, yeah, doesn't end well when you're looking to use the draft. Certainly not. Well, thanks for joining us, Fraser. Next, we're going to get a chance to chat to Connery Maddock, who came home today in P number 13. Connery, good race between yourself there and Paul Thurston towards the end. Uh, of course, track position really wasn't your friend in this race. But a good result all the same. Yeah, I mean, great great fight with Paul uh, there at the end. I would have pipped him to the line if I got a, a better exit out of the last hairpin because we were, we were so, so close and I thought I was going to get him. But yeah, good fight with Paul Fister and Joshua Dinkwater, John Jenkins, all of those in that pack. That was great. Awesome racing from you. Looking forward to next week? Yeah, yeah looking forward to next week. I'm to not totally sure which track it is. <laughs> it's also be, I believe it could well be Zolder. Uh, thank you for joining us, Connery. We'll uh, hopefully see you next week and see if you can get a little bit further up the field. Yep, uh, hopefully. Uh, thank you, Rachel, uh, Rachel and thank you, uh, Venus. Well, thanks for joining us. Well, finally, we'll get a chance to chat to Ryan Walker, of course. Ryan Walker came home, lapped down in P24, but a uh, bit of a moment, Ryan, between yourself and another driver earlier on. Yeah, I was having a good race of... Uh... Mick and Clark, but for some reason they just they just insisted on battling each other. But uh, yeah, made a move on Mick into turn one and just basically carried too much speed and spun round and then went to rejoin the track when I, my start relative menu said that the the next person that was coming was three seconds back or something. So I went to get back on track and next minute I just looked behind and seen a car heading towards me and just uh, whacked me up the back. Certainly did, of course, and you being sideways across the racetrack uh, didn't help when more cars turned up to the scene of the accident, but uh, better luck next week, of course, it is Circuit Park Zolder. Yeah, hopefully I can get a good result there. I got a podium there last season, so fingers crossed. Yeah, hopefully you can repeat the podium. Well, thanks for joining us, Ryan, and better luck next time. Thanks. <laughs> well, Linus, uh, we say a bit of an incident-filled race tonight, and uh, one that quite a few drivers, I think, will want to forget. Approvals, of course, often providing a little bit of chaos to the Skip Barber mix. It, w it was a really, really good race and a lot of great battles, as always here. And with the draft being as big as it is in these cars, being on an oval definitely brings another element into it. And uh, even though it got a bit spread out towards the end, we had six different pairs finishing less than a tenth between each other, and three of those with less than 15 one thousandths of a second. So close finishes at the end. Um, 
a bit too many crashes, but things like that happen sometimes in a series that's usually pretty clean, so... Um, it's a bit is. different today. It certainly is, and of course we have 14 laps of Zolder next week, which look forward to. More of a street course, and well, an exciting rest of the season, in fact. We'll go into Sonoma's Cup Playout after that. Okiyama, Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, the Nürburgring Nordschleife, Anvort and Twin Ring Motegi East. So, it'll be a jam-packed season. Keep tuning in, as always. This is Monday Night Skippies here on Racebot TV and Racebot Primetime. You're watching us here on iRacing Live. I've been Rachel Whiteford, and I've been joined by Linus Brostrom. And as usual, Hugo Louise, the camera master. Thank you, and join us next week. Bye.